Welcome back to the Med Scientist's Corner. Today we're gonna measure the output voltage, the output high voltage of a flyback transformer like uh, this one. And we're gonna do it in a direct way by connecting the measuring system directly on the high voltage and high voltage wire of the transformer. And uh, this direct way is uh, way more accurate than the classic, let's say, classic way of measuring a high voltage because usually you just have to see what's the maximum uh, jumping distance that uh, that the high voltage can do uh, from a needle to a plate for instance and from a needle it can be something like uh, uh, one centimeter per 10 kilovolts so two centimeters are two ki 20 kilovolts for instance but this way is way more accurate and we have a resistor here that I made. This resistor is a uh, uh, high voltage, high value resistor made with China ink on a sheet of paper. And uh, this resistor is supposed to generate uh, a current on the meter proportional to the voltage, the high voltage. So, first of all, what we have on the bench. First thing is a flyback driver that I made. It's a fairly powerful uh, flyback driver. It's a single-ended one, single MOSFET, let's say single MOSFET, but uh, there are actually two. Anyways, it runs at uh, 20 kHz, 55% duty cycle. It's powered by uh, an adjustable power supply here. And there are also another 20 volts here for the logic section of the driver. Then there's the flyback. It's a fairly small flyback with a 30 kV wire, but it's a late model, so I believe this uh, can generate a really high voltage. 10 turns primary, and then the high voltage and the high voltage wire goes at the same time on the sparking needle here on a capacitor in parallel to generate uh, DC to be uh, more reasonable on the meter to be sensated and then this at the same time it goes to the resistor that generates the current on the meter the meter is uh, 100 microamperes full scale but it's uh, corrected uh, with a trimmer here 47k trimmer because uh, the resistor not being uh, one gig ohm uh, exactly uh, this can generate uh, uh, way a bit more current than needed. So when uh, this meter says uh, 50 microamperes, there are not uh, 50 kilovolts, but uh, like 40. So to correct this and being easier to read, I fitted a trimmer and also some uh, protection diodes in parallel uh, of the meter. This is the schematic or uh, half block diagram of uh, what's on the bench. This is the resistor I made. It's a uh, high value, high voltage resistor. It's high voltage because it's uh, quite wide, quite long. And it's made with, uh, as I said, China ink on a sheet of paper, regular photocopy printer paper. And to make this, you just need to draw the resistor shape, maybe, and pass the ink like four times with the brush, dipping the brush every time, every pass. And after the third pass, the resistance starts to drop and to have a reasonable value. Anyways, to measure it or to use it, you have to dry the sheet of paper because you can't use uh, the ink with uh, its water uh, inside because the water uh, varies the resistance and uh, while it dries, uh, it may change a lot. Anyways, I made other attempts like uh, this one here. This came up to be 830 megaohms while uh, the one on the circuit Sorry for the exposure, okay. The one on the circuit uh, came up to be 800 megaohms. Uh, some time ago, I also tried with graphite on a piece of plywood, 
but uh, graphite is uh, quite unpredictable. Uh, the resistance on the length is uneven, and uh, at some point while drawing it, uh, the resistance also drops uh, a lot. So a resistor like this came up to be 30 mega ohms, and it's, uh, let's say, unusable for uh, this project here. And I discarded the uh, graphite with a pencil. China ink instead is uh, way more even on the surface and um, it's more predictable. Also, you can try to uh, make uh, your resistor with a series uh, small resistors. Uh, small resistors like quarter watt uh, you can find uh, uh, commercially uh, of a value or like uh, uh, 10 mega ohms or 22 mega ohms and putting uh, these resistors in series a lot of them you can end up with a one giga ohm resistor it's not a crazy job this can uh, can be done this is how i measure the resistor here with this setup there's a 300 volts power supply with a meter in parallel and this powers the resistor with in series another multimeter that reads volts and uh, this multimeter is uh, 10 mega ohms in impedance uh, in the input so uh, put in series with the resistor makes a voltage divider and let's do a pair of calcs so we have uh, 281 volts here 281 divided 3.68 3.68 equals minus 1 equals times 10 mega ohms it's uh, 753 mega ohms right now and uh, this depends on the humidity and if it has been stressed by the circuit anyways this was the 800 mega ohms resistor and now there's a bit more of humidity and it's uh, a bit higher this obscenity here is a uh, high voltage capacitor i made it's used to make uh, dc for uh, being uh, easier to be read on the multimeter at the end because otherwise there's uh, pulsed DC with stray capacitances I'm not sure what uh, you can find exactly at the output uh, of a flyback so uh, a smoothing capacitor is uh, let's say kinda needed anyways it's made with a uh, iron tube here from a broom I don't remember and um, there are uh, like 30 or maybe even 40 uh, layers of uh, transparent sticky tape this stuff here this stuff is according to the internet uh, polypropylene just a regular sticky tape transparent one and uh, polypropylene uh, seems to be uh, quite good for making capacitors or insulating stuff so with like uh, 30 or also 40 layers of this stuff uh, you can uh, white stand a really high voltage maybe even uh, higher than a salt water capacitor a regular salt water capacitor so uh, this thing here maybe can uh, white stand if it focus damn new this thing supposedly can white stand something like uh, uh, 100 kilovolts hopefully there are also uh, rounded corners here on the, uh, the sticky tin foil that is the outer electrode and this came up to be just 60, 65 picofarads but uh, it's enough for uh, the kind of current we are uh, gonna draw from the high voltage side if you want to see some sparks now, these are the sparks that the capacitor is capable of. Not bad for 65 picofarads. Anyways, I think the flyback is even more damaged. It was already a bit damaged, but now I think it's almost toasted. In series with the target plate here, 
There's a water resistor I made some time ago. It's just a piece of transparent tube filled with water, completely filled. And there are a pair of copper electrodes that protrude inside. And this kind of resistor may be too unstable to be used as a measuring system, unlike our resistor here with Kyna Ink. Anyways, uh, this resistor came up to be uh, something like uh, 200 kilohms, but it varies. It varies with the pollution of the water inside, with the oxidation of the copper electrodes. So it's used here just to limit the current spikes when sparking to be less noisy, and also this makes the output voltage slightly more stable than with just the target plate directly connected on the ground plane here. So, let's see this thing run. We are now at 5 volts on the adjustable power supply. This power is the actual power that goes on the flyback through the driver. Let's power it on. And it says like um, 17, 18 kilovolts on the meter because there are 17, 18 microamperes. Let's turn it off. Let's increase the voltage to 8 volts. And now it says it starts to fizzle. Now it says something like 22 kilovolts on the high voltage side. I have to be careful because this capacitor is live. <laughs> Anyways, let's increase it again to 10 volts DC and it says kind of 30 kilovolts, 30 microamperes. Let's increase it even more, the needle starts to fizzle even more, and now it says almost 40 kilovolts. Let's increase it again. We are at now 40 kilovolts. I smell ozone, and let's turn it off at the moment. Okay, at 13 volts. It generates 13 volts DC from the power sub. It generates 40 kilovolts. Let's turn it on again. If I can untangle myself. Okay. Kind of 40 kilovolts. You can see the needle is slightly going up because it appears to be some avalanche effect on the resistor. That's not good, but uh, anyways, it's uh, accurate anyways. Let's do a thing. Let's measure the temperature of the ink. If I can point the laser, it says 20 degrees Celsius. Let's go a bit nearer. 20, 19. 21, 22, if I can hit the ink, anyways, 22 degrees Celsius, let's turn it off, and read it again, now it's already cold because it's just paper, there's the laser if you can see it. Now it's 17. Let's increase the voltage to 15 volts and let's turn it on. Now it says almost 50 kilovolts. The needle fizzle even more. Let's bring it to 50 kilovolts. It's already there. Let's increase it a bit more than 50 kilovolts even more 
even more and it's sparking on the needle 18 volts let's measure the temperature Twenty three, twenty seven, twenty seven. Let's turn it off. Okay, okay. This has been interesting and fun. See you another time.